record on this computer. All right. In this video, I'm going to show you a different method of how to go ahead and create an assembly without starting with existing part files. This is the assembly that's being done for the class that I'm working on with, not on with. And here are the various parts that have already been uh, created. So initially, an assembly was created first by building the independent pieces. To be specific, the base was built, which is this guy, the center plate was built, this guy, and the drill jig is the assembly of everything, and then end bracket was also built. They were pre-built and then assembled. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the opposite, which is create an assembly. Within assembly, create new part files. Uh, so that you, you don't have to start with building the parts first. This is great for design. I did a video on, on brims that covered this topic, creating a brim for a um, uh, shield, face shield. So I'm gonna open up SolidWorks. And instead of starting from with something existing, I'm just gonna pick new assembly. First thing it wants to do is go hunt down parts to install. The only parts that I'm going to install or bring into my assembly are the parts that are downloaded from McMaster Car. There's a separate video where I cover that topic where you can download fasteners and whatnot. That way you don't have to build those from scratch. You just import them from the vendor website. So these are fixed, these are brought in. Anytime you see a little F in parentheses, just remember that means fixed. The first thing you wanna do is float it. Yes, I know it's an F and an F. Get accustomed to using the, the language fixed and float. And yes, they both start with the letter F, sorry. Can't fix that. As long as there's a dash, that means you can move them around freely. Next thing you wanna do is turn your planes on and your origin is always good, turn it on. Notice that when you step away from that, when you click away, you don't see anything. That means you got to go to view, hide and show, and you actually have to show your planes. Now, instead of inserting an existing part and going to hunt it down, instead you're going to go ahead and click new part. When you click new part, first thing you got to do is pick where am I going to build my new part. So I'm going to split screen this so that you could see the item that we are building right here. Okay, so I'm gonna minimize this on this side. I'm gonna work with a tiny screen. It's getting tinier. <laughs> so as with everything else, we're gonna start with, this, with the base, the most basic part, the base right here. Okay, so I'm gonna pick, it's a square. It doesn't matter how I start. So I'm gonna pick this uh, rectangle, not square. I'm gonna pick this uh, top view, top plane. And now it actually brought me into part one, assembly one. So I can go ahead and click on this plane and start a new sketch. Basically, I'm gonna start with center rectangle and create essentially that rectangle. Go ahead and dimension it. If you don't like the way you're looking at it, you can always pick top view so you could look at it head on or normal to whichever you prefer. Doesn't matter, same results. So now I just wanna add a smart dimension and end to end. And that length of this, now <clears throat> units of measurement are off. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I accidentally started an ANSI. So this is dangerous. You wanna make sure you're in the correct unit. This already says IN, so it tells me it's in inches. We already know, thanks for the catch, you're right. Uh, this is in metric, so I need to change my units of measurement, make sure I'm in the correct units of measurement. Now back to editing my sketch. I'm gonna go ahead and edit the sketch. Now I'm gonna put in the dimensions. Now I have a real number, 356. I know it's not that, it's 240 on the length. 240 millimeters is what that means. Dimension my ends. Again, I gotta click on smart dimension, end, point, end to end, sides, side to side. That's 50, okay? And that's it, I don't do anything else. Then I can go ahead and uh, extrude. Now the big question is, you know, what do I, what am I going to extrude, which way? I always say go to isometric. 
Okay, I'm not gonna extrude up, instead I'm gonna extrude down, uh, just so that I have that platform to work with, the plane. So I'm gonna flip the direction, I'm gonna pick uh, 40. And I'm gonna say, okay. So that's my first part with no consideration to anything. You'll notice that the other parts that are in assembly, they look like they're ghosted out, they look hollowed out. There's nothing wrong with them, it's just that because they're in the assembly, I don't see them as solid objects in my part creation here. I'm gonna exit out of this part. You, I know you're gonna question, well, why didn't I put the holes in right away? Eh, I'm gonna do them a little later just, just to show how you can do that. Just like I did in class, uh, I showed how that was possible. Next, I'm gonna go to insert component. I'm gonna create a new part. And now again, I'm gonna pick, in this case, I'm gonna pick my front plane. I'm gonna go normal two, okay? And I'm gonna do that center bracket. I wanna start from the middle. I'm actually going to pick, yeah, the center, center is fine. I'm going to pick this. I'm gonna start here, go out here. And then of all things, sorry, uh, I'm gonna select a line. I'm gonna go ahead and literally draw my line on the inside. Okay, see that? Gonna, again, there's more than one way to draw anything. I'm just being intentional and in showing you a different method just to be different because I need people to understand, ooh, there isn't any one way to draw. I put in 10 and it got really long. So what did I do wrong again? Ah. Gosh darn it, you willikers, it's in the wrong units of measurement again. So you have to be very careful with that one. As you could tell, I, I made that mistake twice. Why? Because that's the standard units for this piece. So I have to be very careful. Um, I've got to edit the sketch. So be mindful, make that your first order of business because 10 millimeters is not, I'm sorry, 10 inches is not 10 millimeters. It's as you can see, 254 millimeters. Now I type in 10 and it gets nice and small, which is exactly what I was expecting. Going to dimension this side. Let me pick smart dimension, here to here. I'm gonna do that. I'm lazy, so I'm just gonna pick the other dimension, see how it pops and in, say okay. I'm gonna rinse and repeat this. Why? Just because I just want to show you different methods. Do I think this is the most efficient? No, I, again, I'm just trying to show you different methods. I'm going to go to, go to trim and I'm going to lob off this bottom piece. So now I have my shape. The only thing I'm missing is the length of the part. So end to end, it's going to be 110. And then the height of it from top to bottom is 65. Notice I'm not picking endpoints. I'm being very specific about picking the lines. I want a dimension from top of the object to bottom of the object, not point to point. Point to point is definitely different. I know it's a fine difference, but it, it does matter, especially later on if you ever want to modify this part. So I've got everything identified. Now the question is what, what's missing? The way to find out what's missing because if you notice the uh it's still blue so if i maximize this it still says it's underdefined so what am i missing that's done is this not locked in no that's locked in okay what isn't locked in is this it's locked into the middle there you go exactly the midpoint it's not physically locked in to the plane that it's been created in good point so if I undo, instead of trying to lock in the midpoint, let me pick this and then let me pick its plane and make that collinear instead. How's that? Cool, okay. So when I hit okay, then I can go ahead and extrude this. Now here's something interesting. If you ever wanted to tie one object to another object, meaning you always wanted this bracket to adjust dimensionally, in direct correlation to the base, this is where you can actually use one object for another object and tie the two together. 
So when I pick extrude and I select mid plane, and then I select the edge of the other part. Okay, when I pick the edge of the other part, see that? Okay, now set up to vertex. I gotta pick mid plane again. See, and I wanna pick the edge of the other part edge of the other part. Oh, it keeps shoving it over when I do that. I do want mid plane. <laughs> I don't think I can lock it in. I'm going to try it. Well, let's see. I'm going to hit okay. Does it you see how it popped in a number? Mm -hmm. Let me see if I try that one more time. If I pick up the vertex, I'll do that. Okay. And I pick this object, then it locks it in there. I have to pick direction two and pick vertex on that one so it locks into the other perimeter. So it needs to lock in independently to one side and to the other side. So I am locked into using up the vertex and picking both directions. When I hit okay for this, now this object is locked into the other object. If I step out of this thing, the parameters of one part are attached to another object. So if I open this up on this object, this is part one, okay, part two, Okay, this is part two, see that? So if I update the parts, go back and I'm in assembly, I hit save, 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 and save often. See this? Part one is right now, that little carrot, that little triangle right there, the little carrot right here, that little symbol right there implies that it's a subset of assembly. Now is the time when you hit save all, you should get a, um, a request I'm gonna pick new folder. I'm gonna call this one assembly version two. Okay, why? Just because. And it's going to be, I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna call it jig and fixture two, just so I know that it's a different approach. Now, now you get this. Parts that have features defined in context of assembly one. If you select OK, continue this operation, these features will not update in context of the newly saved assembly. So now what they're saying, it's highly recommended, and I recommend the same, uh, just so you know. It's highly recommended that you consider saving new versions of the parts. That's important, and I agree with that. So when you hit um, OK to this, you have the choice right here. This is exactly what they're talking about. I posted this in a pre in a different video as well, but I'm making sure it's in this one. Save internally means that it's a subset of the of this one assembly. That means I can never share it anywhere else. I never can send it outside and use those parts in other assemblies. That's not the best approach. Um, I always recommend save externally and save them as new files. And now is also the opportunity to go obviously save them in the right spot. That's the folder you want them in, okay? And uh, you have part one and you have part two. If you click on it, then I can save it as base. It's always about, it's always about the base. So I'm gonna change that to base. And then part two, I know, bad jokes. Not gonna end. It's gonna be what, center, what's it called? Center bracket, what's the name of that thing? Sure center, center something, right? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll just call it center bracket just because I can't look up the other part. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to go save, and now it's going to change the file names. Okay, now they're independent parts. That's what you want. So this is another way of creating independent parts while you're in assembly. And then you can move on and create the next part and then just do your assembly the way you normally would. What's interesting when you create these, here in assembly, they actually naturally have in place mates. So they won't physically move. You have to break these if you want to animate this part. I'm sorry, animate this assembly. I used the wrong language. If you wanna animate this assembly, you will have to break these mates. Because right now these mates lock it into the place that it's located. That's the thing that you'll have to deal with later if you ever want to animate this assembly. That's a different conversation. 
hopefully this video helps with what you're trying to do and i'm just going to end it right now and take care